Hey folks, Barnaby Dixon here. So I'm currently building an interface so that my puppets can perform with a musical instrument live. No pre-recorded anything, vocals, everything done in the moment. I designed and built these levers that flex in a very specific way so that the puppet could stretch and reach all of the buttons needed to create a song. So a lot of people noticed how thick this device was, the most recent one that works in comparison to the original version that is a lot slimmer but doesn't work. So essentially the mission for today is to make this device again, but slimmer. Now we are doing this partly for aesthetic reasons. If we can get the puppet looking a little bit less like Captain Morgan, that would be a good thing. But also you have to bear in mind, it's a puppet performance as well as a musical one. So we have to have the character moving in a believable and dynamic way. You have to think he can't lift his legs, you know, you can't just lift your fingers like you're playing a piano or something like that because it will look like he's defying gravity. You have to find little places where he can put his feet without having to worry about stumbling, tripping up or pressing a button that you don't intend to. So the flatter the surface, the easier everything becomes. Okay, so here is the lever design that's in the most recent success version of the interface. Uh, you can see from the design that it flexes. Can you see how the lever comes down like this as opposed to like that? That's fairly crucial for making sure it doesn't hit unintended buttons. However, even at its current thickness, you can see a slight bend. Can you see? <clears throat> Sorry. So you see that bend in this portion too? If this was thinner, that bend would be exaggerated and would be more likely to hit buttons that we don't mean to. I took some really helpful advice from the comment section where instead of building something to fit to a device, build the device in the software first and then you can use it as a reference to build things on top of. I made a little template around the buttons in software to check that I was in scale and whilst the print didn't come out perfect, it was perfect enough to see that we were okay. Ooh, that is perfect. I don't really know for what reason, but at this point I abandoned the compliant mechanisms in favor of more conventional hinges. I, th I think I figured that I could get more precision with this approach and would just be able to model something that didn't accidentally hit other buttons. However, it ended kind of badly. Okay, so whilst this does look good, it is mercilessly inconsistent. The pieces slide, they overlap. Um, there are certain points in projects where you just realize that you've hit an impasse and you have to double back and rethink it and that's where I'm at. I do at least have the nugget of a new idea forming in my head and the great thing about it being in my head is that unlike this one, it works perfectly. So in that last version, I had modeled a space so that I could insert a steel rod afterwards. That way I could model them very, very thin and not have to worry about them flexing because the steel rod stiffens the whole thing. So my idea was go back to the original compliant mechanisms. Bridge it, bridge it, bridge it. Come on, bridge that gap, boy. Woohoo! Make them a little bit thinner and just put a freaking rod in them. And that worked. Okay, so we'll cycle through all of the chords. All successful so far. Okay, that is all of them. All of them working perfectly. Oh, I should tell you about this device too. I made a, a keyboard part to go alongside it. It actually raises the level of the whole thing so that the puppet stands perfectly level. You see that? And on the subject of how the puppet stands, I'm able to hit this thing with this thumb here, see? So the puppet is performing and playing and everything, but in secret, I'm able to blast this button here, and this gives me 12 extra chords. So if you have like the E flat major, let's see. But then I press this button in, press it again, and it adds the nine, you see? So that applies to all of the chords. You press the lever down, you get a secondary chord on all of these 12 chords, which takes the total number to 24. You times that by the amount of notes in the chromatic scale, that's 12. I can't do the math, but that is a very, very versatile device. Let's do something with it. <clears throat> okay. Something's got a hold of me lately, and I don't know myself anymore. Feels like the walls are all closing in And the devil's knocking at my door Oh, out of my mind How many times did I tell you I'm no good at being alone Well, it's taking a toll on me Trying my best to keep from tearing my skin off my bones Don't you know I lose control Go. 
mess of me I lose control When you're not next to me Oh, I'm falling apart Darling, you make a mess of me <clears throat> Whew, that was that was a challenge.